The Xbox One is a platform in need of more games, but it seems that indie developers at least aren't especially enthusiastic about releasing their games on the console. Gamesindustry.biz is reporting that according to a developer survey they conducted at EGX Res in London this year, Xbox One is the least popular platform among indies. Indie developers ranked Microsoft's console dead last in a poll of 61 developers. But before the Sony ponies start piping up, the PS4 didn't rank all that much better either. The GamesIndustry.biz survey put the PC as far and away the most popular platform, with 47.5% saying the humble home computer would be their platform of choice if they could release on any single platform. And despite having the lowest install base of all the platforms offered, the Nintendo Switch came in second place, with 32.8% of developers saying they'd opt for the handheld hybrid. Sony's PS4 came in third with 11.5%, while 6.6% said they'd release their games on mobile. The Xbox One was in last place, with just 1.6% saying they'd release their games there. 1.6%, which in this case res re relates to one single developer out of the 61 that they um, asked would prefer on Xbox. It's, it's really bad, bad isn't it? Yeah, it's not what Phil Spencer and Microsoft would want to hear, but it is very competitive. Uh, there's, you know, the, the Switch and the PC are obviously the big draws. The PlayStation isn't doing. I mean, all right, eleven percent. If you got that's the that's in terms of home consoles, in terms of like what you put under your television, they've got the edge over the Xbox, but it still doesn't say much when the vast vast majority would want to go for PC or the Nintendo Switch, and that I guess is confirming what we all kind of knew, that the developers are just saying, we want to be on the PC first, because that's where all of them are, and uh, the Switch preferably as well, ideally, if we can get on the Switch, great. Gamesindustry.biz points out that while the sample size of 61 developers isn't exactly big enough to serve as conclusive evidence, it says the scope of developers surveyed is wide enough to act as a rough barometer for certain trends. They call it a leaping off point for future investigation. And they also said that none of their respondents chose to mention why they placed the Xbox One so low, as well as PlayStation 4 and mobile, choosing instead to flag the benefits of the PC and the Switch. They added that the developers they spoke to would opt for the PS4 over the Xbox One if they had to make a choice between the two. And here's a quote from the article. While many developers were quick to note the overcrowding and saturation of Steam, PC remained the most popular among developers for obvious reasons. It's an open platform that's easy to release on, and it has a large audience of enthusiastic indie gamers. Developers said that PC gamers are better disposed to trial new and experimental content more than consumers on other platforms. One developer told Games Industry, PC is the platform of choice because of the free community building, free bug testing and free game dev consulting. There's very little not to like about working on PC at the moment, they added. The Switch was praised for its healthy marketplace and broad customer demographic. While the Xbox had the edge in terms of how easy it was to work with Microsoft, PlayStation was a particularly popular proposition for VR developers thanks to the install base of the PSVR. And sadly, most devs admitted to crunching on their own games to get them done, with the average dev working 62 hour weeks during crunch periods. Overall, GamesIndustry.biz said indie dev crunch hours are on par with triple a that might actually be a bit of a surprise to some i guess to hear that these that these indie devs are, are putting it on themselves like they feel like they have to crunch themselves they're their own bosses a lot of the time a lot of times just a, a one person operation and they're, and they're putting it on their own shoulders to crunch hard and to to work 62 hour weeks during crunch some of them are going up to 80 hours and stuff like that roughly on a par with what you would experience in AAA development, which might be a bit of a surprise. Uh, but going back to the original kind of topic of the survey, I think the, the Switch has really made an impression. It's only been out for a, over a year, and already it's like one of the most popular um, destinations. The, the eShop is curated, um, the marketplace is healthy, which means that there's no race to the bottom. So they're still getting a lot of money per sale, whereas on Steam, games are discounted to like a quid sometimes, less than a quid. So the, the, the race to the bottom is really fast on Steam. It's not, a, not the same for Nintendo eShop because you could buy a game on the eShop on sale for eight pounds or something, or eight, nine, 10 pounds. 
and it'd never be that expensive in the first place on the PC. So they, they think that's better, and also the, the better demographic or broader demographic is more, more you know, different types of people to appeal to, I guess. So well done, Nintendo, for, for making such an impact on indie development. My instinct was, oh, Nintendo Switch is where the indies are at. That's the best platform. Because you think of the likes of Steam and the overcrowded the problem, marketplace. So. It's really difficult to, um, to, to stand out from the crowd these days, because I was counting the other day, it was like 35 games released yesterday, another 30 in odd one released day. today. One day. And then uh, there's like another 20, at least 20 every single day now on Steam. That's ridiculous. How do you stand out from that? It's it's very difficult. However, the benefits of being on Steam, obviously you can offer early access to games. People can opt in and you can develop your game concurrently as well as sell the game at the same time, which you can't really do on any of the other platforms. So that's obviously a draw for developers. More people who um, appreciate indie games specifically, I think on PC and also your system requirements for PC indie games has got to be quite low, which opens your market yeah. up as well. It's got to be noted that the amount of people, sheer, the sheer amount of people has to overcome all the other benefits from the other platforms. Just on PC alone, you just your marketplace is just, yeah. your potential customer base is just so much, so much more huge. Which is why it's impressive that Nintendo have made the impact they have with such a small install base. They had the smallest install base of everyone that was surveyed. And I think the bottom line is uh, ultimately that this is just a hypothetical question because it's really qu quite straightforward for developers to get wherever they want to get. If they're self-funded or if they're on Kickstarter or whatever, they can essentially release wherever they want. Um, and the barriers are pretty low these days. And thankfully, the Sony and Microsoft have both said, yeah, we want indies on the platform. So there are loads of indies on, on the PlayStation. There are loads of indies on, on the Xbox. And th those two systems have kind of similar architectures as well. So if you can get on one, it's a good chance you get on the other anyway. It's just a hypothetical question, but it does kind of show, gives, gives you a, a good flavor of where indies are at in terms of where they would prefer to be at the moment. PC still way ahead leading the pack and Nintendo's just kind of jumped in straight into second place after one year which is brilliant. Where do you like to play your indie games? Let us know down in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe if you happen to enjoy the video. There should be another video right there if you want to watch that and a link to Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.